The 2020 NHL Draft class is deemed by many as arguably the best in not just recent history, but decades worth of NHL drafts. Now, why is this? Well, of course, it is because of the pure talent in this draft class, just oozing with offensive threats on all sides, whether it be the winners, left and right wings, or centermen. And of course, there are some, but not too many, but there is a decent amount of explosive defensemen that could surely make a difference at the NHL level. But with all that being said, who are currently the top 10 players in all of the 2020 NHL draft class? Who are the top prospects? Well, for you today, I'm going to be discussing, in my opinion, the top 10 and starting off at number one is a guy that I guess you can figure out by now. First of all, welcome back everyone to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tyler. I do consistent NHL content on all things relating the NHL and just hockey overall. And videos I've been wanting to make of for you lovely people. So now that there has been more and more hype leading up to the 2020 NHL Draft, who are the top 10 prospects? Well, you need to start at number one, of course, from the clip you just saw, Alexi Lafreniere. Yes, Alexi Lafreniere, the left winger, which is interesting enough given the fact that in many years, the majority of the time, winners are not drafted first overall. So with Alexi Lafreniere undoubtedly going number one in the 2020 NHL draft, in my opinion, it is very interesting given how he is a left winger and just shows how good he is regardless of the fact that he isn't, say, a centerman or a defenseman. And in, in his draft year in the QMJHL in 52 games played, he had 35 goals, 77 assists for 112 points. Remarkable numbers right there. And also has around 50 Pony myths, might I add. So he is not afraid to get in the, in the nit and gritty by any means. He will make things happen in the defensive and offensive zone. He's just fantastic in his overall game. He has hockey IQ like no other, truly, and has been a crucial part to why the 2020 Angel draft class has been coveted for so long. Alexi Lafreniere has been viewed as the first overall pick for years now, and it should be no surprise come draft day. He goes number one to whomever team has the first overall pick. The Lafreniere, like I said, truly, in my opinion, a generational talent, but I understand the debate. If not generational, then definitely more of a franchise caliber talent to really propel whatever team he is drafted on to taking them over that hump and being a next level type team. Really being a guy that anyone can rally around themselves around and he will just make anyone look so much better than even what they originally are or he'll make them that much better overall as a player going forward. So with that being said, let's get to number two now for the second best in the 2020 NHL draft class. Six foot four, over 200 pounds. Centerman Quinton Byfield has done a phenomenal job playing in the OHL. And in his draft year, as you can see, 45 games played, had 32 goals, 50 assists for 82 points. Now, yes, these stats aren't as staggering as some other guys on this list, but what separates him from the rest? Well, there's a couple things, starting off with his size. Like I said, at six foot four, you would think maybe he's a little bit slower. No, not by any means. He has elite acceleration and skating ability and truly looks like he is a smaller statured forward out there, given how fast he is with and off the puck. His his game on the puck is fantastic as well. It's so hard to get the puck away from him. He just does all the little things, not just in the offensive zone, but in the defensive zone as well. He's unbelievably humble and unbelievably settled in his own defensive zone, which shows just how great of a game he has. And in the neutral zone as well, he's one of the best all-around players in all the 2020 NHL draft class and has been coveted by many for quite some time and for good reason. Now, what makes Quinton Byfield so good? It's things like this. His overall hockey awareness, especially in the offensive zone, is truly superb and easily can go down as an elite centerman in the NHL for recent years upcoming. As soon as next season, I fully expect Quinton Byfield to make it in the NHL level and have a dominant impact right away to whichever team drafts him most likely at the second overall pick. Quinton Byfield, like I said, for quite some time has been coveted and for good reason. His he takes full advantage of the kind of size and body he has as a as a hockey player and is willing to get in the nitty gritty as well, get in the front of the faces of any opposing defender by any means of one-on-one. -on -one. He's just so difficult to go up against 
And as you see from some of these highlights here, he is just a remarkable overall player. And I'm unbelievably excited to see what he will do at the NHL level. Next now, in my opinion, the third best player in the 2020 NHL Draft class is none other than Tim Stutzela. I know I've been saying Stutzel in my previous videos, but I believe the correct pronunciation is Stutzela. And if it's not, let me know in the comments at the end of this video. I would just love to make sure that I have it right. But regardless, Stutzela, as I said, he's a winner and a centerman as well, and has done a fantastic job in his rookie year in a men's league like Dell, which is the German men's league for hockey. In 41 games played there, he had 7 goals, 27 assists for 34 points, and was showing just how remarkable he was as an 18-year-old, already having a record there as the first 18-year-old to average 0.82 points per game in this men's league. Sutsula has climbed drastically through the draft rankings throughout this past year and has shown just how good he is already against men in Dell and has proven that he easily can be a top three talent come draft time. As you can see, Stutzla displays a beautiful set of hands and just overall offensive awareness and ability. He is an unbelievably nimble skater. He has great hockey IQ as well with fantastic vision, is able to take the brunt of a hit, and really can do it all. Like I said, he has climbed drastically over the past year in draft rankings by many scouts and has proven easily that he is, if not a top three, then a top five talent for sure. And to whomever team drafts him right away, I fully expect him to have an immediate impact in the NHL as he has already done a fantastic job in a men's league like Dell in Germany. Next now, with the fourth best player in this draft class, in my opinion, I have to go to none other than Lucas Raymond. The right winger playing in the SHL this season, another rookie as well, 18-year-old playing in a men's league like the Swedish Elite League in 33 games played, only had 10 points and queen four goals and six assists. But don't let that phase you because he displays an unbelievably talented set of skills, especially on the offensive front. And while he is a little raw in some aspects of his game, especially defensively, he easily has potential to be not just a top six, but a top line winner in the NHL. And it looks like what Every team is going to draft him and most likely will happen in the top five because he is just that good, even with this draft class being filled and oozing with offensive talent. Lucas Raymond has proven time and time again why he's worth taking any type of risk on. Raymond, as I mentioned, just displays an unbelievable set of skills, especially on the offensive front. Fantastic hockey IQ as well, and I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but look at that move. The talent is oozing straight out of this young man, and he literally looks like he could be an NHL star in easily in a couple years, in my opinion. He just displays such great hands as well. Here, look at that move, that ridiculous windmill right there and the snipe at the end. That's only one example of the kind of talent that you can get from drafting a right winner like Lucas Raymond. And if I'm a GM in the NHL going into this draft and I say have a top five pick, it would be really hard for me to pass on a guy like Lucas. Next now, at number five, and yes, this can be debatable as well, but Marco Rossi has slowly but surely proven to me why he's deserving of being in the top five for the 2020 Angel Draft class. Rossi, if you don't know him, the centerman playing in the OHL and 56 games played at 39 goals, 81 assists, and 120 overall points. The highest score in all of the 2020 NHL draft class, and he is showing just how good he is regardless of his stature. In my previous video, I discussed Rossi and why he wasn't drafted in the top five, and a big part of that, unfortunately to me, seems like scouts will not give him the benefit of the doubt given his size and stature. He's labeled around five foot nine, but if you see him on the ice, he is of course smaller, but that does not face his game by any means as he has an electric offensive talent, a ridiculously accurate playmaker. He loves getting that pass on the stick of his teammates, of course, and just has an unbelievable set of hands and overall hockey IQ. He truly looks like a guy that as long as a team get it isn't even a risk, I should say, as long as a team jumps on him, and I'm sure they will, hopefully in the top five, fully expect Marco Rossi to be another one of these superb hockey prospects in this class that could very well go down as some of the best players in the NHL for years to come.
Marco Rossi, just superb offensive talent. Another one of these guys filled with a draft class just oozing, as I mentioned numerous times already, with elite offensive upside and overall potential in this class. And Rossi this season t took a huge step in his overall development, as I said, racking 120 points in just over 50 games. Truly remarkable and one of the best seasons that you will ever see out of a player playing in the CHL nonetheless. But with that being said, who is next now at number six? Let's find out. You know, I see a lot of people out there that say that Alexander Holtz and Lucas Raymond are pretty interchangeable when it comes to where they will be drafted. And I can't say that's a far off assumption by any means. Alexander Holtz, another fantastic right winger playing in the SHL as, of course, an 18-year-old and 35 games played this year, had nine goals, seven assists for 16 points. Already looking strong in a men's league like the SHL, which is such a fun league to watch overall. There's so many fantastic players that come out of and currently play in the Swedish Elite League. And Alexander Holtz has proven over the past year especially why he is deserving of easily being drafted in the top 10, if not top 5. Fantastic job in the SHL, as I mentioned. Also playing, of course, with another guy who looks like he will be drafted high. And I have him even drafted higher than him. And that is, of course, Lucas Raymond. That connection is insane as well, and I remember from one of my previous video, my previous video, I should say, one of the comments I got was regarding the possibility of both of them being drafted together by, say, the Ottawa Senators. That would truly be something for the ages, in my opinion, and gives me a kind of idea of similar to how the Vancouver Canucks were able to land Daniel. Um, Daniel and Henrik Sedin all those years ago. Now, I'm not comparing the players by any means besides the fact of, of course, being two Swedish players, of course, playing in the SHL and coming to the NHL, the same team together. But regardless of how their play is, it just would be something fantastic to see. And Alexander Holtz has a lethal shot as well, an overall great hockey awareness, and truly looks like he's another one of those that isn't just having a top six potential talent, but truly a top line forward for years to come. Now for the seventh best player in the 2020 NHL draft, and I have Cole Perfetti. Yes, I did have him going higher in the draft in my last video, but that was hand in hand because of the fact that I think, unfortunately, Marco Rossi might get slept on, given the fact that he is a little smaller in stature. Not that I agree with it, because I have a video saying otherwise a couple videos ago, but overall, unfortunately, some NHL scouts still value size to that extent. But besides that, Cole Perfetti, the Saruman, playing the OHL this season in 64 games, played at a whopping 37 goals and 74 assists for 111 points. Remarkable numbers there. Another offensive threat with also very strong defensive zone and neutral zone ability. And it looks like he can easily be a top six Saruman for whichever team drafts him. Like I said, this draft is oozing with offensive talent and Cole Perfetti is just another product of do of just that Cole Perfetti really looking like the leader for the Saginaw Spirit playing the OHL this season was dominant in doing so one of the best overall players and juniors in North America and is looking like he's an easy top 10 talent if not top five as well Whichever team drafts him most likely in that top 10 is going to get a stud in the making. And as you can see, he just has elite offensive upside like a lot of these other players that I mentioned, but for good reason. Cole Perfetti could very well go down as a huge crucial part into this 2020 angel draft class as being a centerman you just have so much more ability in my opinion on the ice with being able to contribute in every which way whether it be in all different facets of the ice when it comes to the zones or just the players around him as they of course control a lot of the ongoing offensive attack and i know i know i know you might be bothered that i didn't have jamie drysdale on this list yet but now i do at number eight the reason why I have Drysdale falling all the way to 8, in my opinion, is because of just how offensively stacked this draft class is. This is nothing against Drysdale. Personally, I really view him as an elite offensively my defenseman with great ability to possibly be a top pairing defenseman, of course. But with that being said, there's just so much offensive talent in this draft class, which is why Drysdale falls to 8, in my opinion. But, of course, playing in the OHL for the Erie Otters, Drysdale really leading the way for them in 49 games played with 9 goals and 38 assists for 47 points in 49 games as a defenseman. 
truly showing that offensive potential and also defensive awareness as well. He's not a problem in his own zone by any means, and I think as he continues to develop and grow his game, he will, of course, only get better in all zones. But offensively, he looks like a threat, whether it be 5-on-5 five five or special teams as a possible power play quarterback provide offense for his team for the Erie Otters especially and has a wicked snapper from the point and can of course use that slap shot as well this great overall hockey IQ in the offensive zone making things happen like I said whether it be five on five or on the power play and can defend as well whether it be on the penalty kill you truly can do it all but he loves to pinch in that rush and makes things happen on the offensive front and really looks like another forward out there nine and with my bias I would probably put him higher but I'll leave him there at number nine is of course centerman and left winger Antoine Lundell playing in SM Liga which is the Finnish Elite League. Antoine Lundell is undoubtedly my favorite player in the 2020 NHL draft class for good reason. Lundell unlike a lot of the other offensive threats that you see on this list playing in juniors Lundell has already been dominant in a men's league like the Finnish Elite League and 44 games played at 10 goals, 18 assists for 28 points. Unbelievably impressive for an 18-year-old. But easily, in my opinion, is the best defensively-minded forward in this entire draft class. And you can see it for yourself. If you watch his highlights or you watch any of his games, you know how good Lundell is in his own zone and in the neutral zone. He's just fantastic and really looks like the most capable player, in my opinion, of adjusting to North American ice, playing in the NHL as soon as the next season. He's truly that good and has so much to show for. Lundell has just such elite ability and all zones of the game and of course he isn't as flashy as some of the other forwards that I have on this list for you today but that doesn't matter because his defensive and neutral zone game makes up for it just superb hockey IQ does does in fact know how to shoot the puck of course and looks like he's easily capable of being ready for the AHL as soon as next season and in my opinion could very well go down as one of the best players in all of this draft class because of how well-rounded his game is Last but not least, at number 10, I have Jake Sanderson. A kind of surprise pick, in my opinion, but Sanderson has really went up the draft rankings board over the past year. And the only USHL player, might I add, that I fully expect to be drafted in the top 10. But Sanderson, in 19 USHL games for, of course, the United States of America, he had two goals, 12 assists for 14 points. Sanderson looks like one of the most composed players out there, and in my opinion, the second overall best defenseman in this draft class, and for good reason. Sanderson displays a fantastic ability of not just offensively, but defensively overall. He looks like a such smooth-sounding defenseman in his own zone, truly a fantastic two-way overall defenseman with possible top-line potential. Sanderson can display, of course, offensive ability, but he is without question known for his strong play and his defensive zone. He will pinch in the rush when needed, as you see here, but overall, Sanderson has just a strong overall game that I've seen from some reports as comparisons to Ryan Suter, which is really telling of just how good he could possibly be. But probably one of the most reliable players, if not reliable defensemen, in all of this 2020 NHL draft class is easily one that could eat that chunk of minutes, whether it be 20 to 25 minutes a game, and it looks like he could be a guy in the NHL for easily over a decade. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, especially if you're new here. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of hockey content. And give me comments below if you agree or disagree with me on my draft rankings. I would love to hear your thoughts, truly. And with all those things being said, make sure to check out my previous videos. I'll have them right down here below for you. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in a day or two.